Hello, and welcome back to Gate Show Crafts. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rick. And today we're back with a beer-related episode. Um, sorry it's been a little while, beer fans. Um, but we have been busy behind the scenes. And today we're going to talk about Rick's latest brew. Well, it's our latest brew. It's yeah. actually, you know, we work together. It's a team. I may do some of the more babysitting of the kettles, etc. But uh, it is our brew, yeah. yeah. And it's an American pale ale that we brewed a number of months ago. Okay, so um, and why did you pick this style? It's not necessarily something we buy all the time. I think we normally go a little hoppier than this style. Mm -hmm. but, uh, um, just kind of, you know, we're using that new catalyst system. I just mm -hmm. wanted to try something pretty simple. Also, we are trying to, uh, I was trying to make a base beer for another beer. Mm. So I was trying to, while I was designing the strawberry uh, milkshake beer, I also wanted to uh, do this one. Okay, right. So it's, um, it's like getting a, I don't know, almost like brewing like a broth before you brew a complicated soup or so, or cooking a broth before you do a complicated soup or Maybe it's my version like of swatching. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right. Swatch your beer, get your baseline, and then you can add your flavors. There you go. So yeah. Well, we needed, a, cool. we needed a five-gallon beer. The taps were empty. Mm -hmm. Everybody was sad about that. So I wanted to do something that uh, would help me help me design the next beer. But also with just kind of a simple beer that was going to accentuate the bittering beer, uh, excuse me, the bittering hop and the aroma hop that I used in the next beer as well. Right. And this is um, Huel Milan, right? Is yeah. the Huel Milan, is the, yeah. Is the, um, the hop that we discovered really on a trip that we took a couple of years ago and discovered at Earth Eagle Brewings and really like the kind of melon and strawberry flavors in this hop and... I've been kind of nagging Rick, like, what, what else can we make with that hop? What else can we make with that hop? So this is sort of your answer to that as a basic beer, not a, not a fancy, complicated recipe. Right. It's similar to what we did, actually, when we did the Party Guile beer mm. last year, mm -hmm. uh, except I'm not turning this one into a Belgian, and I added a little bit of different malts this time. Okay, mm. cool. So we'll talk a little bit more in detail about the recipe. Let's go ahead and taste it, though. Okay. So you can see it's got a... Uh, it's got kind of a, what, what color Hazy, would you call orange, that? maybe bordering on brown. It came out a little darker than I was anticipating. Yeah, it kind of has a brown undertone to it. Mm. Mm. It is bitter. Yeah, that's oh, the that's magnum awesome. hop, which is not much. Uh, I think it's just one ounce at the, um, at the right mm -hmm. at the boil. But it's just a nice bit yeah. of bitter at the end. But I am still getting a little bit of the strawberry and melon. Yeah, I am too. And I, my taster's off because I've still got this cold hanging on. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the most reliable uh, reporter here. No. But, and but yeah, I would say it is fruitier. And it's it's had a little mm -hmm. time uh, because we went out of town for the Maryland Sheep and Wool. And then Rick got injured and I got sick. We haven't been drinking. So um, <laughs> I know it's so sad. Uh, <laughs> But this has had time to age a little bit in the keg and really fully evenly carbonate. I think that's really helped it along. I agree. I agree. Nice mouthfeel to it. Yeah, nice and creamy. It definitely has a very bitter aftertaste, I would say. That's quite pronounced. Yeah. yeah. Not well, unpleasantly so, but more, almost more so than the standard IP. Or which is interesting. There's really American only yellow. one ounce of a Magnum. I think it's 11% mm -hmm. AUs of, of bitterness, uh, which is... Top of the scale there, but only one ounce in at the beginning of the 90 minutes. Now, if I, or excuse me, the 60 minute boil, I could have put it a little bit later in the boil and get a little bit less of that. Mm -hmm. But with the next beer, with the strawberries in it and the lactose and, all, and the extra sugars, it's going to, I wanted it to kind of be able to balance out against that. Bring that down sweetness. and make it not yeah. be too sweet. Yeah. I think so, this is a little too bitter for me, I have to be honest. And mm -hmm. I, it's just, it might be more the character of the hop, sure. not the bit bitter. But I tend not to like the herbal hops as much. I tend to go for the citrus type hops, the fruit flavors, and the floral, mm -hmm. and um, tend to kind of stay away from the really earthy, yeah. oregano, super bitter. It's not that I don't like this, but mm -hmm. you know, if you put several beers in front of me, this may not be my first choice because oh. of that lingering yeah. bitter aftertaste. Fair enough. One of the other things I did in the other recipe, I did it just differently, is I took... Um, I only put a little bit of magnum in, but I added Cascade as the rest of the bittering hop, which is mm. about half of that AU and a little bit more fruity citrusy. Okay. So yeah. again, I was trying to cut down. I didn't want. I was kind of erring on the side of less bitter, but mm -hmm. I just wanted a little bit of backbone for it. Yeah. So hopefully, the other beer, if it comes out, will uh, maybe maybe I learn some lessons from this. Right. Right. 
but it's a very good beer. And I almost would say that if you put this in front of me and told me that it was an, uh, an ESB, mm -hmm. an English style, or an English style ale, yeah. then I might say, oh, okay, this is on style and I like it yeah. for that. Yeah, it's got a little bit of that butteriness that mm -hmm. I would associate maybe with a more of an, an mm -hmm. English style. It doesn't have the right yeast profile but for it is, the English. But, but it is yeah. European hops, too. Okay, so, yeah. I mean, when the, uh, the hops that you would normally expect that she's describing as fruity, et cetera, et cetera, are going to be more like the citrus and things like the cascades and mm -hmm. the and the uh, and the ones that you're going to have the American here. or the Australian. Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not unusual, and that's 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 fine. Um, yeah, it may not be what you're anticipating, but I think mm -hmm. it's a pretty good beer. No, it's solid, definitely solid. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit more. So you got the Magnum hops. What kind of grains did you use for this? So I don't exactly remember which uh, grains, but the recipes included in the links here. Uh, but essentially, it's just a base two row malt and some a couple of other uh, specialty malts. Not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's really mostly a two row. It's not quite a smash because you have two different uh, single malt or single hop, sorry, smash, uh, because it does have um, a couple of different malts in it and a couple of different hops in it. But it's a pretty simple, basic recipe. Like I said, it's a made to be the backbone of other recipes. Okay, great. And um, in developing this, you uh, found a new tool online that you found helpful. So let's talk about that. Yeah, well, it's new to me. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Sorry, it's new to me, uh, but it's a website that's got a pretty good following. It's called BrewersFriend.com, and it's a website that you can you can build recipes in there, but also then share recipes, which is useful because it has a really good database behind it. Mm -hmm. So I can say I want to have an American Pale Ale, and I want to use this type of malt. And we use this type of specialty malt, and it'll just keep filtering and filtering down till you find somebody else's recipe, look at that recipe and maybe get some ideas. Or you can also reverse it the other way around and create your own uh, recipes by just choosing a style and then adding and subtracting hops and malts until it either becomes the recipe you want or it uh, kind of matches up with the recipe style. Right. So you'll get little check marks next to it as you go. If this is too bitter, it'll be an X next to it, and then you need to adjust your hop schedule in order to get down to something that uh, adheres to the style. Right, and we're talking about the BJCP, the Brew Judge Certification Program styles, which are the standard, I know at least in the U.S. competitions and, and for defining styles of beers. I don't know if that's adopted internationally. That's a good question. I don't believe so, but I don't know because it does cover all of the styles worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously you're going to have regional differences uh, and things sure. get categorized into them. But yeah, I'd say it's probably the go-to. Yeah. yeah, So so it'll tell you oh, this is sort of like a Belgian, but it's not quite a Belgian because it's too bitter or it's not bitter enough or it's, you know, got too high of an alcohol content or something. And so it'll kind of tell you if you're on track for the style you're trying to make, right? Yeah. but Or again, tell you what style. You're, like you could have some Franken beer, but it'll say, well, it's kind of close to the style. That's so, true. That's true. I, I believe that is the case. But again, mm -hmm. doesn't mean you have to brew it and all those green check marks have to be there. It just will give you a kind of a little uh, comfort of knowing that it falls within that in case you're going to be submitting it to a competition. Mm hmm Right. Or just bring it to your homebrew club and say, hey guys, I made a porter. And <laughs> then you end up tasting it and they're going, mm, this doesn't really taste like a porter. But yeah. if you check your recipe, you yeah. can kind of know your brewing to style. Yeah. So there are other software out there that cost money and some that are free. This is a free to join website. But in order to take advantage of saving and sharing your more than three recipes, you do want to get a membership. And it's like two bucks a month you pay for one year. And it's, I think it's pretty worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, we have no sponsorships, no nothing paid, no promotions on this uh, channel. We just like to recommend things that we find helpful. Yeah. But you know, we were talking. Um, I was asking Rick, like, why does he like this tool? And you were telling me that you tried other tools that were a lot more on the like hard sciencey side of things, that like super nerdy, minutia, yeah, technical side of things that were kind of hard to grok for the hobbyist um, yeah. brewer. Yeah. True. This one has all of those bells and whistles, but they're not as prominent. You don't feel as if you need to know your exact water profile, et cetera, et cetera. But you can import those types of things. So if you want to, you can check the box. It gets a, your exact water profile. If you live in one of the cities where that is published, you can actually get that information oh, cool. and it'll work it into that and like tell you New how York much. New water is like this and San exactly. Francisco water is like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Nice. Or you can have your water tested and you can put that information in there. Or you can just have it ignore it. Or you can just say use it neutral kind of standard settings. Mm -hmm. um, 
so it's a, you can get into the minutia, but it's a much friendlier interface. Mm -hmm. So it's more welcoming, and I felt more at ease. It was more intuitive than some of the uh, the more powerful ones I've used before. Right, and I would say probably it's you know with that sharing capacity too, it would be nice maybe if members of a homebrew club were all logging their recipes that way, then that would be a good way to kind of share and communicate mm -hmm. um, their recipes with each other, mm -hmm. and also just mm -hmm. um, a good entry-level software program to help the entry-level homebrew person. Yeah, yeah, those are all great ideas. Sorry, I was kind of thinking that through while you were speaking. That's a pretty <laughs> interesting way to think about that, if you could have groups and be able to form informal groups or more formal groups. It would be pretty interesting. I haven't okay. looked into that, though, but it's yeah. pretty interesting. Does it have, like, a friend or, like, a yes. follow mechanism in it? Okay. Yes, it does. It does. So you can buddy up with people. That's yes, really cool. exactly. You can share your profile, et cetera. That's great. Cool. Well, I really like your beer. The more I'm, the more I'm tasting it, um, the more I like it. Actually, yeah. I'm it's just... funny how the first few sips can be a little bit different than once you kind of get into it. Uh, it sort of changes. Well, that also comes from the temperature of the beer coming out, what temperature mm -hmm. it came out, and what temperature you're drinking at. Um, I'm, you know, I would like it to have been a little bit more melony and a little mm -hmm. more fruity, but I, I'm still getting strawberry notes at the end in the finish it's right. really nice i'm getting a lot of the fruit up front and then that again i think also because just my congested and i can't taste everything that bitter is just kind of hanging out yeah. at the end but it's a nice crisp beer and it, it would be great on a hot day you know so drinking something either a little bit sour or a little bit bitter is nice when you're Agreed. overheated Agreed. um yeah so uh speaking of kind of introductory homebrew uh tools and opportunities we wanted to talk about the homebrew workshop that is coming up that we are offering with our friend Scott Russell, um, the homebrew guru. So Scott has been on the channel before. We'll link his interview down below. Um, but he is super experienced. He's been a great uh, mentor to you. Great, yeah. Exactly. We were talking about the recipes before. Allow me a brief segue. Mm -hmm. I learned from Scott's book, How to Brew, because he had recipes. So the internet was a little bit overwhelming of what recipes were out there, so I used Scott's brew about North American clone brews in order to kind of develop my first recipe. So I would look at his recipes and then either be able to completely follow those recipes, and you can just follow a recipe you can brew, or I would mm -hmm. tweak them a little bit based on that. Well, that's the same thing as the software allows you to do. But anyway, yeah, Scott has been a big influence on my brewing, and um, mm -hmm. I, you know, we're really proud to have him doing this workshop. Absolutely. And um, he was uh, offering workshops through the Lebanon Homebrew store. Unfortunately, they've since closed. And so we wanted to continue um, kind of his availability and access to his expertise. So we're offering a two-part homebrewing workshop. Um, the first date, the main part, is going to be on Saturday, July 13th. And it will be held in Bethel Village in uh, central Vermont. It's right off the highway. Um, and that's going to be the brew portion. And then a couple of weeks later, we'll have the bottling portion. Of course, we have to wait for the beer to ferment. Um, and then Rick and I will be leading a session on um, packaging options for the home brewer. And we'll actually be bottling the beer and you'll be able to take some home with you. So um, if you're interested, we'll include the link as well in the, in the down bar um, just below this video. And you can read about the workshop and register that way. Okay. It's going to be a really fun event. I mean, yeah. Scott's really knowledgeable. I mean, good question and answers. There's going to be tastings. And then on the bottling day, we're actually going to have an optional uh, excursion out to the at least one brewery. Right. Uh, we haven't exactly decided which one, but uh, one of the local breweries in the kind of greater central Vermont uh, region, there's several around that are that are really nice and, and brew a variety of styles. So we'll be able to, to talk about um, those styles as well. Um, the beer that we're going to brew for um, the class is a recipe that Scott is going to develop for us, but it is also going to be an American uh, pale ale, so it'll be kind of a straightforward um, beer similar to the, the recipe that Rick developed for, for our home use, and um, we're really looking forward to that. So we hope that you can join us. If you have friends that are interested, of course, um, feel free to bring a friend with you. Um, there are local housing options that we can put you in touch with if you're looking to stay um, for an extended vacation or, you know, if you want to come up for a couple of weekends. Um, it would just be a nice time of year. July and August, you know, there's plenty of other stuff to do here, too. So, yeah. So, so if you're homebrew curious, join us for this workshop. Yep, absolutely. Um, and, yeah, happy brewing. Let us know what you're brewing lately or what your next plans are. And uh, we'll be back probably in a couple of weeks with our next beer because that one's under you know well underway and we've kind of 
Unless we, taste we the... drink our mead. That's right. <laughs> we need to taste the mead, and we're also going to have the strawberry milkshake beer uh, coming up that's in progress. So um, we'll have more brewing content for you. So thanks again for joining us. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And cheers and happy hoping.